Pound of ground beef down and ready to go. Want to be wishing you a beautiful and happy uh, Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? Yeah. Hey, happy Tuesday. I don't have a good word for Tuesday, but you know what? Wishing you the best of the best on this beautiful Tuesday. Bitcoin doing fuck all in the overnight hours, but we actually have a few things to be talking about as it is a full moon tonight. So you know what that means? Well, hasn't been, it hasn't, it hasn't meant mooning prices actually in the past. But let's go into the live scene, of course, and let's see what we got over here on Mr. Bitcoin. Bitcoin still holding above the uh, cyan 89 exponential moving average right here. So as long as we're above there, again, no real reason to no real reason in my in my opinion to be like super bearish you know looking for a move down to about 36 uh 3650 maybe even 3400 um and as long as bitcoin's essentially maintaining this 89 exponential i will consider this likely just a consolidation looking like that very much on the lower time frames this is your hourly right here which i'll put back on the drawing tools this is what we were looking at yesterday um the bottom of this flag formation would be around 39 30 we could say right around that cyan 89 exponential which you know more importantly i put more uh, i put a lot more weight on that and then, of course, our resistance uh, rounding out right around 4,000, which is going to be our 12-hour 200 exponential, which is also going to be our daily 100 exponential, uh, just by the nature of it, you know, 12-hour 200, uh, daily 100. Anyways, uh, that's coming in right around, you know, a few ticks below 4,000. But essentially, that is the range of operations. So as long as Bitcoin's between these two areas, I do look at this as a flag, as verified on the lower time frames. The volume signature would be proper for this. But of course, as with any formation, I really dislike playing counter formations to the overall trend. So in this example, we be looking at typically a bullish formation um in an overall downtrend i mean this is you know the the, the trend is still down uh, as as uh, as looked at over the past year or well over now uh, well over a year now as we are in march of 2019 uh, but more importantly you know looking at something like this i do think to myself that <clears throat> If Bitcoin, you know, I, I do want to be hesitant. And when I'm playing something like this, I'm really out of boredom right now, because quite frankly, don't really need to even trade this range, to be quite honest. I, you know, don't even need to trade for for uh, for another like six months if I didn't if I if I really didn't want to, if I just wanted to wait for another perfect setup. But if I am going to trade something like this, a bullish formation, an overall bearish market, um, I'm going to do it with options. So I do have an options position on right now. I've been showing this for the last few days. It's actually starting to produce a little bit more profit. We got uh, not point almost not point one today, so not bad, not bad at all. Um, and again, a very small streamer account, so. You know, don't really expect all that much from this, but should be going up and up um, as we get closer and closer to expiration and gives me a lot of variables with how I want to manage this. Bas basically, just a couple of spreads. Got a put spread going on right here, more in favor of the uh, of the sell side. And we got a call spread going on right here between, or sorry, actually more of a time spread uh, between 4000 and 4250 Kind of a fucked up uh, uh, time spread, essentially, um, with selling more on the uh, on the outs. Is there a significant amount of premiums on those guys uh, on, on the uh, I think that was the April's the April regulars. So going back onto the charts right now, you know, I am hesitant and looking at the daily sorry, looking at the 12 hour, we do have 12 hour stokes crossing down, you can see a trend line forming right here, which has gotten the last few highs. This was your uh, this was your high in late February. This was your high in early March. And once again, we have hit this area. It hasn't been too, um, too powerful over the past uh, over the past couple months. But what I could say is that perhaps we are making something like this you know are we making a rising channel within this little bear uh, uh within this little bull flag right here i mean rising channel typically ha uh, implies a bearish nature perhaps and the funny thing about this is that or perhaps not funny thing depending upon your disposition is that the measure move from the bull flag would actually be meeting up with the upper resistance of this channel and also this horizontal right here which which basically originates from our past couple highs going on in uh late february and uh in late december and actually even uh in in late november as well so a lot of confluences with this area, and I actually would be looking to be a seller right around that measured move, um, anywhere around uh, 41, you know, 41.20, 41.50, if it, if it does get there. Of course, people will be looking at this whole thing and saying that this is an inverted head and shoulders. Well, this is... <laughs> It's the fucking Quasimodo of Quasimodo's if this ever was one. Uh, but they'd be saying that this is a left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Well, first things first, the volume signature is wrong in this. Also, the shape is wrong. You want a V bottom for your actual head, just, you know, as, as an aside. And more importantly, when it comes to actual inverted head and shoulders or head and shoulders or any sort of pattern trading, which I'm not a big pattern trader. I don't really care too much for, especially on cryptocurrencies. Um, I'd want to see the actual neckline broken, which proverbially, like, it's even wrong to say it. But even if it was right, it would be at 4120. So you can't really play it right now or at least I wouldn't really want to play it um, if I were a pattern trader it's really the guys who 
never mind. We'll get into that later, perhaps. Anyways, four hour right here. We do have four hour um, Stokes still headed south, still headed down, uh, and we do have four hour RSI trending below the exponential. Uh, does suggest that there is a little bit more downwards pressure, but you can see that 21 exponential on the four hour also running out price action has provided the impetus for support along this whole flag formation. So if I am trading the four hour, that's what I'd be using. It's currently coming in around uh, 39.50. Of course, hourly is 39.30. Um, and as long as those hold, I would be looking at this, yes, as a bull flag. And, and, and you know, if we do break 4,000 to the upside, I would be looking at a move towards 4120, 4130. Um, so, what else do we have on the medium time frames? We've got eight hour stokes right here. Eight hour stokes are still down. 10 hour stokes are going to be down. 12 hour stokes, as we just looked at, are down. What about the daily, though? The daily have been up for quite some time, looking a little bit more tired and getting up there just a little bit more, but still, still up, actually. And then it's interesting to me because we were actually seeing all, of, we're seeing conflicts between all of the low to medium time frames. And then all of the higher time frames, which I'm about to show, but not on the daily. The daily is the only one that's actually really up. I mean, obviously, you know, if you go below an hourly, it's who fucking knows what's what's in there in the directs of the hourly or and below. Uh, but going to a two day, you know, two day stokes are down. However, this could very easily change around on the uh, on on the next tick. This is going to be absolutely critical, and I'm sure that we will get uh, we will get confirmation on this uh, at the very latest 8 p.m. Eastern time tonight when the, when we do get another tick. As we're either going to get we're either going to get confirmation that we do want to cross up here and also defend. This would also be a defense of the bullish control zone, and I'd be pretty damn. Uh, I would actually be certainly looking for that move to about 41.50 if that were to happen, perhaps even beyond there, you know, maybe even 43, 44. Um, but by the same token, if it does remain here or lower by end of day, this will remain still crossed down and also look to me like a little bit of a fake out, which in the past has operated pretty damn well um, each and every time that this is crossed down for the past uh, year. These have been pretty good plays for the most part. We had one snake around here, but for the most part, uh, almost always a, a, a decent play, especially when it's originated in the uh, bullish control zone. I mean, these these were highs going all the way back from 20,000 to December of 2017. This was your high in February, 12,000 double top before going down to 6,000. This was your high in May at 10,000 before going down to 6,000. This was your high in August, you know, at, at 8,400 before going, before going down to 6,000. This is your high at 74 before going down to 6,000. This was your breakage, or sorry, this was your breakage at 6,000 before going down to 3,000. And, uh, and as you can see, we are technically still down right now. What about three-day stokes? Three-day Stokes are also giving us a little bit of a snake as well, and we will be getting another tick on this uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern time tonight, which perhaps I would say, well, because it is a higher time frame, I would say that it does ha it does hold more weight, um, and we could do kind of a similar thing for this as well, actually. We, have a, we even have a trend line forming right here um, going all the way back towards, hey, this doesn't look right. Something doesn't look right here. Maybe if I go to Bitstamp, hmm. Did I just fuck around with that too much? No, it's it's it's, it's all about the same actually. Um, but as you can see, uh, trend lines coming in right around here. So if we were to kind of charge back up, I'd imagine that that would probably coincide somewhere around that you know right below 4200 resistance. Um, if, if if this were to get confirmed up, because usually when you do kind of snake around like this, if it's if it's a quick you know in and out, that usually is followed by a pretty momentous move. So. I do want to get that out right now, and uh, and obviously very important as we do come into the daily dual close later tonight. But you know, plenty of hours, plenty of hours until that. So, uh, looking at the three-day dual time frame, though, it's I don't really see any glaring obvious issues here. I'd be I, I would be bullish off based off this uh, in the you know in the more short-term time frames. And of course, I need to separate short-term, medium-term, and macro time frames like the super high time frames. Uh, short-term, medium terms, those can change around quite quite interchangeably all throughout the different mark cycles. Um, but the macro time frame, the 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 macro trend has not not changed in well over a year and it's been down so yes i can be a little bit bullish in the shorter term time frames and i would be based off the three day um <clears throat> as long i mean as long as we're above the 10 simple which is coming in where that critical 3900 number you know you could say uh, and sorry i use 3900 and 3930 interchangeably right now just because it's easier to fucking say <laughs> um but as long as we're above there, you know, I I would not be bearish based off the three-day total time frame. Uh, also, you do see a pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, exponential moving average cross right here, which, you know, usually, you know, if I was just looking at this, I would be looking at a move probably somewhere right around here, you know, which would be right around where basically the measure move on on all the things that we just looked at before. So a lot of confluences with that area. If we do take a leg up here, and and again, am I saying that Bitcoin is going to take a leg up here? Am I, you know, am I putting my my eggs in the basket? Uh, getting bullish right now. No, I'm not. Like I said, I'm just playing options and in, in a very small position at that, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> but um, 
you know, that's that uh, that's what I'd be looking at from the lower time frames. Anyways, uh, let's see. Do we have anything to be aware of on the let's go to let's go to CME. CME's did close above that critical number yesterday. Uh, the critical. What was it? Thirty nine hundred number. And again, CME is just a lot easier to read right here. Uh, you do see that CME's did close the day as kind of like a uh, you, what do you want to call this? A long shadow to the upside on the uh, on this doge ish type tilde, just a bodyless type tilde. I don't care what the fuck you call them. Just care about how it reacts with price action. You can see very obviously that uh, we do have a nice gap down all the way to about 3,900. So again, just another thing suggesting that, hey, as long as Bitcoin is above 3,900, my, my general disposition for very low time frames is you know, is, is this is a this the, the, uh, this is a bullish consolidation um, in the context of a bull flag. If we do break 3,900, then from CME perspective, this would look incredibly bearish, and I'd be looking for a move back down to about uh, 3,800 relatively quickly, and then overall, most likely about 3,650, 3,600. Um, as you can see, we actually made our first higher high uh, on CMEs for the first time in, I believe, the history of CMEs. Actually, yes, going all the way back, there has not been one higher high except for. Right now, between this point and this point, um, pretty it's 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 not much, but it's something, I suppose. Uh, we do have daily stokes on CME still headed up, still headed healthily up. Actually, looking exactly like spot right now. Um, RSI is not telling us anything. People are going to tell you that this is bearish divergence. I need to see continuation to the downside first. So technically speaking, on CMEs, if we were to take out the low at 39.35, uh, but it's taken down to 39.30, um, which will also would be the very low time frame support as well, if you remember. Um, then then yes, I, I actually would be looking for that to take over. But for now, uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it that just yet. If we do put on the drawing tools, you will also notice that uh, this trend line, which had been holding back all of the last one, two, three, four, five, six highs, uh, will also be right around where? Right around 3,900. So as long as Bitcoin's above there, floating above there, I do give it the benefit of the doubt. However, volume on this dildo bringing us above this resistance, extremely lackluster. I mean, if this is... If this is going to be a trap, this would be a phenomenal fucking trap because, I mean, Jesus, there is literally no trades being done yesterday. Not a single trade. No, of, co of course, there's, there, there, uh, there's trades being done. But when you look at this, the volume metrics in comparison to, you know, where we actually move the markets is nothing, which is concerning on an actual breakout of a formation like this, which everyone's looking at, or I'd imagine all the professionals are looking at. Uh, I'd want to see a lot of follow through almost immediately. Instead, we don't. We, we see an immediate, immediate sell off off of uh, off of the open. Um, still has not been followed through either which way. So that's more important to me. But uh, I can say very, very handily that if we actually did break, you know, 3,900 to the downside, it would become extremely bearish. Uh, like I said, a move likely down to the low side of the range overall over, you know, over the period of a few weeks, maybe. Um, but for now, you know, still hanging at high. I want to go down to the lower time frame, see how these guys are operating. We do have uh, four hour dildo charts uh, still coming down. Actually, Stokes having a fresh cross down. Um, you see the same sort of support right around here and also the gap just healthily right around uh, 3,910, actually. Uh, RSI is trending below the exponential. So to me, that is a little bit more of a bearish setup I'd, i actually would be looking for a little bit of a pullback here but again it's not until it actually officially breaks this area where i'd become like actual positional bearish um for right now and i'll just probably sell some spot against those short puts because i did i did get i did get a pretty good price on those puts so uh so just turn into a covered covered put um anyways by the way the options um the options beginners tutorial series is fully done by the way and the last video of that series is 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 a video from the literal program itself now of course that program is 35 hours long, like 52 videos. So one video is, you know, you probably need the context of the whole program. But I think within that that playlist, um, I, th I, you know, I, 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 I think most people are getting it. It seemed like most people who were reaching out to me uh, understood what what that video was about, and uh, and even without the context of the rest of the program, you know, it's you, it's pretty actionable. I mean, it's it's a classic strategy too. It's something that everyone's going to use, uh, whether you're whether you're a super professional, been doing, been doing it for 30, 40 years, or whether you're just starting. I mean, it's it's like one of the basis is one, one of the most basic strategies, but it fucking works. Um, anyways, <clears throat> okay. By the way, Jesus Christ, while I'm here, I should actually talk about my programs. Um, all of them are on sale. Uh, with the code uh, year 20, I should flash that. It's all capitals, Y-E-A-R 20. Let's just flash it really quick. There you go, year 20. Um, and that goes for every program, the Trade Like a Professional program, the Master Your Options program, and the Jewel Indicators. Of course, I need to explain this really quick as well. The Trade Like a Professional program is the all-encompassing technical analysis program, which is not just technical analysis, but also strategies, risk management, position management, understanding the underlying market dynamics, and of course, you know, access into the members only disc uh, Discord community. S the Master Your Options program is like that. But with uh, but with regards to options, which is the and to give you an idea, both these programs are 35 hours plus 
long, so it's it's not like I would not suggest doing them at the same time. Uh, the jewel is just quite literally access to the jewel indicator, which I show uh, pretty frequently on um, on screen. Anyways, for all those programs, uh, someone accused me of of doing uh, reverse psychology the other day because I always say, hey, if you're not like fully into this, if you're not fully you know die hard looking to do this as a living, don't invest in this. But I quite literally mean that because it's very awkward when there's been a, like a mismatch, someone in, someone coming into the community before and uh and it just you know it's not a good fit so i actually really do mean that if you are not really looking for looking to do this in a more serious way then these programs are complete overkill take advantage of my free shit i quite literally tell you that every fucking video take advantage of my free shit it's gonna get most of the people most of the way that they want to be but for the people who want to go one deeper that's uh that's there for you anyways okay back onto the charts um because i know people hate that kind of shit talking about that it's like jesus christ man um anyways uh let's go check out gbdc what did gbdc do overnight or sorry not overnight but where did it close yeah close right at resistance right at this area at four dollars 90 cents so gbdc is right at resistance and you do see that the four hour 200 simple is hooking its way around and going to be aligning with this horizontal right here which has been governing the last one two tops in this consolidation which to me this consolidation does look like an ascending triangle as of right now it does have the right uh does have the right volume signature does have the right shape the right size and in uh, a very obvious resistance right here at 490 now because just because this is typically traditionally a more bullish formation um, again I really dislike playing bullish formations in an overall bearish market just like I hate playing bearish formations in a bullish market it's just I'd rather play bullish things in a bullish market bearish things in a bearish market um, and more importantly for a pattern like this I need to see it actually break out above 490 so even though the setup is kind of there uh, I'd still need to see this like officially break out. I'd want to see, you know, uh, you know, obviously, uh, ideally, I'd want to see today's daily open well above 490 and, uh, and and then have a breakout if it's going to act like that. Uh, next target on this would be somewhere right around four, uh, sorry, five dollars, five and a quarter, um, which would probably put put spot actually well above where I'm looking at that uh, at 42. I, I think it'd put it somewhere around 43.50, maybe even 44. Um, dependent upon the actual premium, but uh, I, I, I think it'd be something like that, right around here. Um, anyways, uh, for GBDC, I want to. I'm curious what the daily's looking like right now. Daily probably did have a pretty good uh, close. Yeah, so daily Stokes will be crossing back up, and my God, man, this this has actually not been too accurate. The daily Stokes for GBDC not uh, not that great um, as of recent times, but in the past, mm, better. I don't want to say that this is a fractal, but Jesus Christ, man, what's going on here? Fractal, fractal time. Uh, you do see the 89 exponential also going to be hooking around that uh, th uh, that initial five dollars region. Which you know, if it does, if it does open up um, today at five dollars, I would imagine that it probably does sell off on first pass. It's going to be your prior high, and also the 89 right there. Um, question is, do we close above it? All right, um, let's go back on to Mr. Bitcoin. It looks like he's 39.60 right now, so ticked up a few bucks since we uh, since we last looked. Let's go check out the longs and shorts. The longs and shorts still in favor of the longs. Actually, both sides creeping up just a little bit, but still very, 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 very small for both sides. Uh, it's not really till till either side gets above 30,000 uh, on, on on either side that it's kind of like too many people on the bus syndrome. Uh, right now, for for reference, we're we're at about 23,000 open longs and 22 and a half thousand open shorts. Uh, three and a third of these guys are hedged, so. We got 19 and a quarter uh, open naked. So a little, you know, still in favor of the longs. But more importantly, I'm not seeing the reaction that I want to see. Uh, historically speaking, you know, if if we are going to respect these underlying market dynamics um, as the right way to be, you know, uh, I I interpreting the price action, which, again, each and every time that the shorts have gone into this red box territory, that has lined up with all of the major jumps of the last year. Uh, we can go through it. Per we can go through it. But I've literally done this ever, like for the last month. So it's uh, so I I'm, I'm sure that you already know. Um, but if you want to match it up, you know, you can just go through all, all these different ones. Every time that's got below 20,000 uh, open shorts. That's when uh, 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 that's when price action explodes to the downside, um, but we're not really getting the same sort of reaction here. And you kind of see the last few times that we got that we crawled our way out of the red box territory. It was a very swift up. You saw that there was no questions asked. You know, people were, I mean, people just fucking shorted this this thing to the ground right here, right here, right here. Right now, you're not really seeing the same sort of behavior. Uh, it's a lot of hesitation. So yes, it is still valid. I still I would say that it's it is still valid until I fully get confirmation that it is you know we we've gone the other way. But it is certainly on the radar that mm, could it be changed around. And if it does change around, more importantly speaking, that'll be the first initial signal to myself saying hey. 
it's time to start reconsidering this market right now. And likely we'd see an extended run into the 4,000s um, over the next couple of months, I, I'd imagine. Anyway, speaking of that, let's go to the higher time frames really quick and let's go back here to Bitstamp. Whoops, let's get that off and uh, let's go to a weekly. There we go, weekly's right here. Um, as far as weekly's concerned, nothing's changed here. And I, I always like to say this for like the macro people. Again, I'm not a macro person myself. This is not financial advice, but not a financial advisor. Go fuck yourself, SEC or whatever equivalent to the uh, to the European Union is over here. I don't know who this is. Is it Draghi? <laughs> No, he's just he's just in charge of uh, of doing the euros. Um, but more importantly, uh, it, you know, if you are a longer term type thinker, uh, it's it's been this fucking simple for the last four months. As long as it's below the purple two hundred exponential or above the pink two hundred simple moon average, nothing's changed. Whichever one gets taken out first, that's going to be the next uh, the next kind of macro direction. Um, I'd imagine for for at least a few months, if to the downside, probably longer to the upside, it becomes more of a uh, more of a shit show. Um, if we do break to the upside, we would be looking for a move. You know, if, if we were to both open and close a, a weekly total above the purple 200 exponential um, on the weekly, I would be looking for a move probably. I mean, at least into the mid 4,000s, uh, 44 would be extremely likely. Um, 40, 47 becomes a, becomes a, a real possibility as well. Uh, you do see that the 21 exponential will be hooking down around and come and coming in right around uh, a little bit below 40, 4,300 right now. More importantly, though, the 200 simple to the downside coming in right around, or sorry, right above uh, 34, 34 and a quarter, we could say. Um, if that area does break, I'd immediately be looking for a massive move to the downside, uh, likely into the mid 2000s, mid to low 2000s, again, right here. But of course, that's well and far away. So I always want to remind myself that as a trader, I don't want to be taking those big directional shorts until that 200 simple breaks, which I hope I've been very clear about. You know, I can be bear I'm going to be bearish in an overall bearish market, no doubt about that. But um, as far as taking position, well, that's a whole nother. That's a whole nother thing. So <clears throat> that would be my trigger for the next uh, sort of big trade. Of course, this is, you know, marked by the blue box territory right here between 23 and 26. This is also the 886 Fibonacci trace, which is which is where Bitcoin did bottom out in 2014-2015 mark cycle. Some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming around from July of uh, J June, July of 2017. And also if we throw in the volume, uh, the, yeah, the volume profile, you will notice that there's, you know, there, there's basically nothing doing below this 3400 level. And it's very likely to have a similar reaction to what we saw from 6000 down to down to high 30, uh, down to high 3000s. Um, similar to what we'd see, you know, if we broke 34 down to mid to low uh, 2000s. Um, also going over to the BLX index, you do see that the 377 on the, on, on the weekly is coming in right around where, you know, 26. Uh, going to the monthly, uh, we can see the 89 is coming in right around where, right around 25. So a lot of things align with that area. And while we are here on the monthly, I do want to talk about this for a second. Uh, this 3900 area is of great importance to me because in, what is it? like 10, 10 or 11 days, how many ever days there are on March? No one knows how many days there are on March. No one can do, like there's something with your knuckles that you can count the fucking days. I don't know what that means, but there's at least, there's at least probably 30 days there. Anyways, regardless of that, it doesn't matter. Um, I want to know where this next monthly total closes because we do have a very nasty uh, setup potentially occurring with our with, uh, with our lower periods, the red 10 simple and the yellow 21 exponential, which are looking across the downside. Now, if this monthly does end below, does close below the 50 exponential right here, which is currently coming in again around that critical 3900 number. Then I would become immediate. I would become very bearish as well as when if and when these guys do officially cross, which could be confirmed um at the end of this month it could it could i mean if we i mean if, if bitcoin fails to get back above i guess five thousand they will cross the downside um i would be looking for that to kind of intensify and signal that that all the bots and the algorithms are likely to, to you know increase their sell pressure their sell programs and that could be the impetus for actually breaking this consolidation to the downside uh, fully um so again this is a very tricky area as we get closer and closer to the end of the month but still hanging around right around this critical area so i do want to present this more higher time frame idea as well um of course the two week did make a little bit of a change of behavior perhaps but not fully confirmed either as we go over here to the two week uh we did close our first two week total above the red 10 moon average for the first time in a very long time but more importantly speaking I need to see both an open and close above this area in order for me to um, consider it a confirmed kill of that moving average and as you can see uh, so far we haven't you know we, we haven't done that we we did close above on the last one so now we're gonna now we have opened on this one now we need another two weeks to expire so we can actually both open and close above this guy but again the problem with this here is that you know until you actually fully confirm that you could get something like this is what we saw um before that you know the only time that we had really broken the the, the 10 simple in the two week was i mean sorry we, we hadn't even broken it uh, up until january of 20, 2018 
more importantly though i'm looking at the yellow 21 and the yellow and the green 55 which have crossfit downside and are gaining divergence away from each other as you know verified by the last tick uh, that would tell me that this that the trend is strengthening to the downside as well now of course if this were to you know uh, run back up would that negate that actually no it wouldn't it's completely fine if we did run up a little bit but as long as we have this cross it would be overall bearish on this time frame um, it's not really until we start you know getting back above the, the the 55 where I'd start to relinquish that idea and where's the 55 it's actually right around where the monthly 21 is which is 5200 which by the way if I'm also going off of a monthly perspective as well I, I don't really switch around to bullish until Bitcoin gets back above the monthly 21 exponential, which again, from a historical perspective, has been a pretty damn good indication on when uh, when it goes bullish. The last time that Bitcoin regained the 21 right here was the end of your bear market in 2014, 2015. Um, so if we were to get back above there, you know, from from a traditional standpoint as well, that's that you know that's kind of what I'd be saying. Of course, the mo the 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 most classic way to do it is uh, back above 6,000 and no longer bearish, no or at least no longer no no longer reason to be bearish from a technical analysis standpoint. Um, so yeah, alrighty. Um, we talked about that. We talked about that. Let's go look at the crypto fear and greed index. We are taking out a 56 today. We've been we've been around this 56 number for the past week or so. Uh, technically greedy. Um, certainly not like super high, but uh, we have gone all the way up to a 69 read not too long ago, as you can see right above my head, my big fat head, my ugly face. <laughs> Make sure you talk shit in the comment section. Um, but more importantly, you know, from the last year's perspective, each and every time that this uh, indicator has gotten above a 50 marker, that has matched up with a major dump. But again, are we doing something different here? Because most of the times when we actually did make a move up, it was a very, it was very swiftly followed by a by a very violent move to the downside. I guess every single one except for this one, where we actually spent some time in this more uh, more greedy area. Um, and as you can see right now, we've actually spent about a little over a week now in the greedy area. So. There is a full moon tonight. You know what that means. Uh, I don't. I don't know what it means, but maybe you do. <laughs> um, let's go check out. A, uh, I'm going to check out a few more things on Mr. Bitcoin uh, while we're here. Let's go back to the. Let's go back to Bitmexico. Here's what the lower time frames are saying. I didn't actually even check really on the on the hourly. Hourly stocks are headed down, but they are getting. It's looking like we're going to try to hold this 89 right here. You can see it's governing price action. Again, just kind of aligning with the support of this uh, of, of this flag formation. Something like this is what it looks like to me. <clears throat> with, again, a resistance right around, right right under 4,000, which if Bitcoin does break above, yeah, I'd be looking for that move to 4120, 41, maybe 4150, something like that. Um <clears throat> So, do we have anything on the jewel? The jewel's not saying shit. RSI, RSI just looks like consolidation. Um, nothing crazy going on here. Uh, as always, price action first until Bitcoin breaks above four thousand or breaks below thirty nine thirty. Uh, not really too much to do. I mean, unless you want to play support and resistance, which you know we talked about yesterday. And if you did play support and resistance yesterday, you got a pretty good trade off of you buying uh, thirty nine thirty, selling right here thirty nine uh, thirty nine eighty. Not bad. I mean. It's the best that you can do in a, it, you know, in a, in a consolidation piece like this. Uh, but while we are here, I do want to get, I, I do want to give a special shout out to uh, to my man Bollyport. As always, man, uh, this historical volatility rank has been uh, a fucking lifesaver for me recently. Um, and let's see what it's let, let's see what it's suggesting right now. Uh, it does say that this consolidation can go on for 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 quite a bit longer. Actually, uh, we're still ticking pretty high, and this thing typically does get to a very low number before you do break out. So could we fall this all the way over here? I mean, that would be so brutal. That's oh my god, that would be so fucking brutal. But you know the rule: you get one move a week, and that's it. That's fucking it. Anyways, um, let's go down to a very low time frame. Maybe we can get uh, maybe we can get some some on here. If you don't like what you see on a higher time frame, just go down to a lower time frame. That's the, that's a trick. Um, not so much either. Not so much either. Uh, I'm curious what is perhaps like a medium time frame, like a four hour. Four hours quite low. Yeah, four hours interesting to me because four hour does tell me that. Uh, uh, does give validity to this idea as a rising channel right here. You see how this has a nice orderly kind of drop off on the historical volatility rank. Well, that's telling me that this is all kind of uh, of you know uh, of the same consolidation. Also verified by the volume signature right here as well. Now we do have a one off um, going right here, but that doesn't necessarily destroy the structure. That's completely fine. Um, and more importantly, I mean, we could break out of this and still just you know hit this resistance right here. You know, that's and, and still be still be within the context of that. That's what makes this a little bit tricky right now. 
Uh, but other than that, historical volatility rank not giving us too much. It's it's actually suggesting that we can spend some more time in this area. Uh, daily historical volatility rank. Da the daily historical volatility rank should scare um, should scare everyone because the daily historical volatility rank is suggesting that this whole phase of the market fit uh, of the mark cycle is likely to take a, a lot longer. Um, we initiate new phases when you get below about a 0 0.1. As you can see right here on the breakers of 6,000, as you can see, you know, on on these moves over here um, beforehand. But right now, we are well above. We're actually at uh, about a quarter tick. Um, you know, or sorry, I should be I should be going on um, on uh, on Bitstamp, but you get getting the same read either which way. What we could say, however, as well, now that I look at it, is uh, in this next phase, we actually could even have a pump up all the way, or sorry, not a pump up, but the historical volatility rank could hit up all the way over here. And I'd actually go as far to say this. If we had a pump and we saw the historical volatility rank here, I would interpret that as massively fucking bearish. What you, what you wanna see is you actually wanna see the next move down and hitting this area. And that would actually imply more neutral to it, it, it. Sorry, it wouldn't imply a neutral thing, but it would imply that the overall bearish market is losing its grips on the uh, on on the overall trend. If that were to happen with a failure to break that area, um, again, just kind of telling us about the overall signature of this of this whole beast. Um, so yeah, all right, get back, get get this off, and go back down to. Lower time frame. Uh, let's go check out the top shit coins and see what they're doing. Uh, what what about the top of the top? The Mr. Buterols of the world. What's he doing? Is he still? Yeah, Mr. Buterol is very interesting to me because Mr. Buterol not following the rest of the market um, leaders up. Uh, Mr. Buterol, I really wanted to see break this 144 level um, on that run a few days ago. Uh, to kind of keep up with, you know, Bitcoin breaking 39, Mrs. Litecoin breaking, I think it was 58. Uh, Mr. Buterol got actually stonewalled right there and using that as very obvious resistance. Oh my God. And I've been trading Forex and I'm missing every fucking play right now. And it's so, and it's, it's, it's actually not that frustrating because there's been so much opportunity there. Uh, if you're, if you're bored and you want to play Forex, I, I, I would suggest, uh, I, I would suggest, you know, if you want it, if you want to scalp, that's probably the best venue to do it. And I do have affiliates link to it. Um, it's probably in the description of this video. It's, it's for evolved markets. It's the only, it's the only broker that I found that, that seems legitimate, that accepts Bitcoin, uh, no KYC, all that good stuff. And, um, so far really enjoying my experience there. So I would say that again, you don't have to use, a, you don't have to use your affiliates link if you don't want to, but that's going to always, that's going to be called fucking, uh, what's it called? Reverse psychology as well, man. Hey, <laughs> this, it's like, there's no winning that conversation. So fair enough. Just don't just don't even say anything then, I suppose. Um, but more importantly, with Mr. Buterol, support right here, right around the 21 at uh, 138 and a half, which is going to be aligning with this uptrend um, line right here. Again, that 138 and a half level. If that does break, I would be looking for a move down to very, 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 very likely right here. Well, I mean, yes, you do have support right here, but I don't think that you're just going to break that just to go down there. I think what really likely happens is you actually come down here around the 0.5 fib, uh, right around 126 and a half. If that were to happen, um, but hey, you know, technically speaking, yeah, there would be support if you, did, you know, if you did break 138 and a half, there would be technically support right around here, right around 140, 134 and a half, or 134, we could call them. Um, overall, major resistance right here, obviously, 143 and a half, 144. If it does break above there, I'd be looking for a move at the very least to 152 and a half, and likely 161. Uh, this is all on Finex, by the way. Um, daily stokes are still up. Daily uh, RSI is looking neither bullish nor bearish, pretty bullish actually. Um, daily jewel is is taking a leg up, so fair enough. You actually did get a buy signal right there um, on this low. Ooh, nicely done, Jewel. But I wouldn't consider that a perfect signal. I, I, I wouldn't have taken that myself. Uh, the more cavalier people using that indicator might. Um, but yeah, as far as Mr. Beatle is concerned, that's, you know, it's de de uh, definitely the laggard of the bunch. Let's go check out Mrs. Litecoin. Mrs. Litecoin, again, having major, major, major bearish divergence going all the way through one, two, three, four, uh, touches on this baby and still in the formation of an overall sending broadening wedge, which is typically a bearishly resolved formation. We are seeing continuation off of yesterday's uh, top. And I do believe that we did hit a top a few days ago, as I called it, uh, one, th well, sorry, 63 and a half. So I don't mean to see, say, as I called it, it just, it sounds fucking arrogant when you say shit like that. I don't mean to say that. You know, if, if you think that I'm trying to be arrogant, you know, it's it's probably the wrong read. Um, you, usually not my intention. But my point is that, hey, here, now you can fucking do it yourself. I mean, that's all, all I was doing was just looking at this horizontal matching up with the 377 um, and beautifully executed. So hopefully my camera doesn't die as it's pretty low in battery. So if, if you do see it freeze up, well, sorry. Uh, but... 
there's a couple competing narratives going on. So while all of those things are bearish, um, and we do have daily stokes also crossing to the downside or hinting at across the downside, not confirmed just yet, we also do have a daily dollar golden cross getting extremely, extremely close. We are, I'd say, about half a week away from this now. Uh, granted, sorry, granted that Litecoin, Mrs. Litecoin can 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 maintain above fifty two and a half dollars. So this is absolutely critical because usually when you do see these crosses, you will see a comeback into Tesla cross, and that's what I'd be looking for. But if this shoots right through, if we break below fifty two and a half dollars, I would not be looking at the golden cross to likely be played out. And as, and if we break and if we break below fifty one dollars, I would definitely not be looking for the golden cross to be played out. In fact, I would actually look at that as a negation of it, an attack. And as this does loom ever so closer and closer, um, I would be looking for for fireworks relatively soon. So first move, I, I you know I still think that we probably come down from here. You know at the very least about what is it? What is this area? 50, 54 and a half, um, and then fifty two and a half. Uh, sorry, fifty fifty one below them. Um, so yeah, but everything other than that actually signals some bearish things. Uh, Daily jewel. Mm, could consider this uh, a weak setup, but not my favorite. I want to see all three aligning. Again, if, if you have access to the jewel, I want to be very, um, you know, I, I always go for the perfect setups. This one is a potential. It's not It's not perfect, but it is potentially a pretty good setup. Um, okay, let's go on over to BNB. What are the other top shit coins doing? By the way, speaking of uh, perfect setups, BNB is getting close to a perfect setup for the sell side. Um but not quite there just yet. You do see bearish divergence on the daily as well. One, two, three stabs. You do see daily stokes. Uh, it basically looks like the same chart as Mrs. Litecoin. In fact, I believe also in a very similar formation. Or not not a similar formation, but uh, but you know similar in nature formation. We do have a a rising wedge going on right here. Yeah, I do hate my wedges. Um, but uh, it does look like it actually wants to rally back up and test the top once again at uh, $16 and like 15, 20 cents, something like that. But uh, if that does get rejected, I would be looking for this to actually fall back down apart, um, come back down, test $14.73. And if that area fails, be looking for the full retrace down to $13.91. So again, uh, I, I, I'd be very cognizant if we do have another move back up, especially to this. Sorry, what was the area about? Little, a little, just right around $16. $16 is where I'd be looking towards. Um, Overall, overall, you know, looking at this, definitely the strongest chart of the bunch. Um, and technically speaking, this does, you know, technically speaking, we did make an ascending triangle and we did break it out to the upside. And we are still respecting it, but I'm not really seeing the volume signature that I want to see for that. And the measure move on this baby would be $17. So if we do break above that $16 range, if you do see a break above $16, I would be looking for the full measure move to be hit at $17. There should be major resistance right there. Uh, but then again, you know, once it gets there, that's. The game continues once again. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd be careful on this one. Uh, Zcash, the real Bcash, uh, poking its head out above this resistance trend line once again. And if we could actually close above about fifty-five and a half dollars, it would be looking for a run to about uh, sixty bucks. Um, but again, a long, a long day to go. Uh, Bcash, same sort of thing. Being, I mean, it's kind of like it's it's like Zcash, but but fast forwarded a few a little bit. Um, right at the eighty-nine right now. Uh, as long as we're being held and buy it, I would be using this to manage trades off of. But if if we do break to the upside, 161.5, I'd be looking for a move probably likely to, I mean, at the very least, to about 173. But uh, but really, overall, I'd be looking for a move to about 200. Um, Tron Cash, what's Tron Cash doing? Literally, I, again, I've been... I've been <laughs> as long as we're below 2.5 cents, you know, it's, it's not good. Um, as long as we're above 2.18 cents, it's it, you know it's it's just consolidation in this area. There's there, there's nothing crazy to really say here. No, that's not too helpful, but it's the fucking truth, man. Uh, there's not really any trades to be made in this area. I mean, if, if I had to take a trade, I'd take it to the downside right here. We do have daily Stokes hinting at a cross down right at the edge of the bullish control zone, so that would be a negation of it. Uh, daily RSI is being beheld in or like or trying to be beheld in into the bearish control zone. Um, and it does look a little bit droopy here. If it does turn down, I would be looking for, you know, I would be looking for a bounce right around 2.19 cent. Um, if that area fails, then you got problems. Uh, it's not too much holding it up from about 1.9 cent. Uh, if that would have happened, uh, Neocash, what's Neocash doing? Um, actually, right, uh, hugging hugging on the uptrend line right here. So this is either a buy the dip opportunity or we break it. And if we do break $9.10, I would be looking for a move down at the very least to about $8.80. But really, your next big support is down all the way here at $8.30. Uh, EOS Cash, what's EOS Cash doing? Um, still being beheld in by the 200 simple. 
and the and the 21 exponential nothing nothing new here uh three dollars and uh what is it 65 cents breaks i'd be looking for a move down to about 330 35 if uh four if if 390 breaks the upside i would be looking for a move probably around uh 430 ish area but for now you know looking at me we do have we, we do have bearish divergence going on right here uh daily jewel is it signaling something Ooh, no it's not oh wow that's it's actually taken out to the upside right now um, not, uh, not a signal either which way though. We looked at Stokes already, um, and they're kind of looking a little bit tired, but not, not, not a full signal just yet. Uh, XRP cash. What's XRP cash? Ripple my nipples. Free the nipple, but still stuck in this goddamn descending triangle. Uh, the descending triangle of death and decay apparently, uh, lost or sorry, did not lose the 21 exponential yesterday, but is flirting around with it once again today. We do have daily Stokes getting tired once again, uh, getting kicked out of the bullish control zone, actually finding uh, obvious resistance right here for the last few months. Um, um, and potentially crossing down uh, if this does you know if this does give away I'd be looking for a move to about 30.7 cents 30.7 cents the critical support if this does fail then 29 cents is your is the last chance for love as far as I'm concerned on mr. ripples nipples if if 29 cents breaks and then the then the nipple will be freed but it'll be freed to the south side direction so Brad garlic house one step closer to negative two dollars per every ripple owned by the world community um, probably down, you know, if, if that in a more serious tone, if that were to break, I'd be looking for a move down to the low 20 cents region, high teens. Um, by the same token, you know, I mean, could it could it still be that we break out above here? I'd say it's I, I'd say I'm really not leaning for it. I'm really not leaning forward to it. And I think that my my opinion probably does come through pretty damn clear. It's, you know. Wouldn't be too optimistic. Um, pretty ugly chart. Really fucking ugly chart. Uh, Monero Cash. What's Monero Cash doing? Getting stifled right at resistance as well. So everything's right at resistance and turning down. We do see daily stokes turning down as well. And these last few crosses in this in this crazier in this more critical range have been major dumps. September, uh, late September, uh, break a, break a six thousand on Bitcoin. Uh, 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 first rally uh, off of 3,000 and then a couple hot, a couple last highs in this area. Uh, yeah, I'd be looking for this to probably come down as well. Oops, that's my MT5. Or I'm just getting really excited. Boy, you're going. Um, support right around here, 51 and a quarter, 51 and a half. If that area does break, I'd be looking for a move down all the way here to 47 and 70 cents. Uh, by the same token, could it be that we actually take out this resistance to the upside? Perhaps, but I, I'm not leaning towards it either. If that were to happen, 52 and a quarter being taken out, I'd be looking for a move probably over here to about 57 and a quarter. Uh, Stellar Cash. Ooh, did Stellar Cash break yesterday? It did. Stellar Cash, the magical alliance, not doing what they do, or perhaps telling us that something new is going on. I think more likely, and you see this right here, the daily bearish divergence is going to be negated. We no longer have that. We are using this as support so far. So, so far, so good. Good exponential moving average cross right here. Let's go down to the lower time frames, I think. Um, okay, wow. When I go down to the lower time frames, it becomes a little bit less, uh, a little bit less inspiring, I suppose. Uh, we do have bearish divergence on the four hour. I... <laughs> The daily actually does look like it wants to rally more. The four-hour, I would say, looks very tired and looks like it does want to um, d uh, does look like it wants to come down. We do have a, a four-hour little golden cross. Uh, what I could say is, you know, this resistance seems to crawl its way up all the way to 11.7 cents. If this can break, I would be looking for a quick move, perhaps all the way to 13 cents, but somewhere in this range between 12.5 to 13 cents region. Um, overall, uh, there are some bearish things here, but the daily does look fine to me. However, Four hour jewel will be setting up for a sell. If this, if if we take out this area right here, eleven and a quarter cent, I actually would be bearish on this because the four hour jewel will confirm a sell, and I'd be and I'd be looking for a move probably back down to about ten and a half, maybe maybe low ten cent region. So I think that does it for that. Oh, let's go check out traditional markets at two eighty two again. Not bearish on these. I mean, I'm not bearish on these guys as long as we're above two eighty one. We're still above two eighty one. I mean, I haven't really been bearish, bearish on these as, uh, you know, as soon as the monthly close above the 21, and that was in January. Or, yeah, it was in January. Uh, and we have a daily total golden cross going on right now. I, I have no reason to be bearish on these. Um, I mean, uh, well, yes, my opinion can be a little bit bearish just because this rally does look kind of lackluster, you know, volume falling off all the way through. But is that, a, I mean, is that a big deal in the overall grand scheme of things when you keep on moving upwards and onwards and taking out the area that grabbed the last uh, five highs? No, it's not. That's way more important. Price action first. One, two, three, four, five highs. The six one does the trick. And really, from a daily perspective, don't see too much stopping it from 280, 288, 280, 290 area, maybe even the prior highs. Um, 
to me, this is, you know, this is a, this is a complete V bottom out and looking fine. Uh, monthly is above all major movement averages. This looks fine. I mean, it looks good. Uh, weekly, extremely good reaction last week, uh, holding above all major movement averages as well. Looks fine to me. You know, there's, uh, you know, I know a lot of people are chomping at the bit to short this, uh, but there hasn't really been a good reason. I'd say even if 281 breaks, do I get bearish off that? It's not that I get bearish. I only get bearish until, you know, 275 breaks um, for, for a nice play. And, and structurally, I get bearish if 260, what is it, 265? Yeah, 265 breaks. That'd be a big deal. But you can see that we're very far away from that. And right now, looking completely fine. Uh, daily... Mm, it's daily setting up, maybe, but it's still got some ways to go. It's gonna, it's, it would take some time. Anyways, that's going to do it for that. Let's get back on over to Mr. Bitcoin and see what Mr. Bitcoin's doing. We still holding in on this flag? Yes, of course we are because it's a fucking full moon and that means nothing happens, you goddamn werewolves. Rip this shit up. <laughs> Um, yeah, not, not too much else, else to say here. Of course, I'll wrap it up right here. Be respectful of your time and say support 39, uh, 30 resistance, 4,000 flagging out in here. As long as we're, in, as long as we're within here, I would just be playing support and resistance. That was a play yesterday. It's buying 39, 30 selling 38, uh, sorry, 39, 80. Um, might get another, ch I mean, I think you already did get another chance, uh, in the early morning hours on this dip down to 39, 45. looks like we do want to give another test to this area. It does look a little bit le weaker the more and more that we do test this area. Uh, we do see all medium time frame oscillators pointing down, but still until 39.30 breaks, I would not be getting too damn bearish. And more importantly, I would really want to see more, like way more importantly, I want to see CMEs breaking 3,900. If, if CMEs break 3,900, I'd get structurally bearish and look at this as a nice trap, which looking at the volume is definitely a possibility right now. Anyways, that's, that's going to do it for right now. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you. Um, as always, want to be wishing you the best of the best uh, Tuesdays possible. I'll be back on later with some more live stream action. Look forward to seeing you there. And if not, well, wishing you the best day possible. Anyways, take care.